what is a Wednesday night? Some months later, well, weeks anyway. And we're yes. recording again for the Syndicated Pipe Club. And as always, I have with me Greg, the Badger Piper. How are you doing tonight, Greg? I'm doing well. Uh, you know, uh, I know that, uh, you know, the smoking laws and stuff are a bit stricter up into Canada, but, uh, you know, you're uh, somehow it's still managing to uh, come down here and even affect this area with uh, with all your smoke. Uh, are you talking about that fire that's going on? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we have, uh, yeah, the um, wildfires up in Canada. It's going all the way down that uh, uh, the sun was obscured today in my area. Uh, it was like really overcast. Yeah, we had we've we've uh, being not that far from you. We had uh, a few uh, blots today too that were not caused by regular clouds. That were caused by the smoke from the wildfires that are going on right now, wherever they happen to be. I'm aware of them. Yeah. I'm just not sure where in the country they are. Yeah, it, which it, to me it it's, it blows my mind that uh, something uh, you know that far away can uh, affect. Uh, yeah, you know, can it can affect us like that. Oh, I know, and it's not even like it's right next door to me either. Right. But then again, you know, like I, I think about like uh, uh, that uh, the times in history when one of those volcanoes in uh, uh, Iceland have erupted, and it, like it caused like a, a cooling for like a year, where it was like there was a year without a summer uh, for most of the world. Right. 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 Well, because the ash got up into the atmosphere and uh, did all that. Right. So, even though people can't actually see us, what are you smoking tonight, Greg? Oh, uh, well, tonight I'm smoking one of my uh, go-to blends, uh, uh, C&D's uh, uh, Briar Fox. And this is with my uh, Rossi... Uh, not a uh, pipe uh this chunky billiard that i got for uh, father's day uh that i've been uh, it's been broken in and uh i really i quite like this pipe you know normally i like the more um kind of like slender kind of like uh, billiards and everything but uh i don't know there's just something very uh you know uh just uh you know you, you feel very masculine with it i suppose how about you uh what are you uh smoking tonight well, I am smoking my Trepus whatever pipe. I call it whatever because there's not really a good shape. I've shown it on on the uh, on the show before. Just if you, if you're listening and or and or watching the Minecraft characters that now represent us, until I can get my video card fixed, and by fixed I mean replaced. Um, but if, if you've seen it before, you know it's a sitter, but it looks kind of like a. Uh, bulldog and it's bent and it's it's just a whole bunch of things and it's got a deep rustication on it and it's just strange that's why i like it yeah it's like um they, they took the shank and kind of pulled it out a bit instead of it like uh the hole being at the bottom of like where you would expect it to be it's at, out at the side yeah because if you follow this shank down Nick, you'd expect that the draft hole where you're pulling your smoke from would be like un like out the pipe already like it would be right, yeah, about, kind of, right about here where my finger yeah. is and for In those way, that, kind of, go ahead and for those of you who can't actually see my finger which is everybody um i was holding it about a quarter of an inch under the pipe I was going to say, uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a Cavalier. Yeah, just a bit. I wouldn't be surprised if that's uh, what he used as a design basis for this. Because you, you could see a Cavalier going kind of like just like this. Coming yeah. down and have it sitting right there and using the uniqueness of the Cavalier uh, shank, I guess. Yeah. We want to call it. Um, as a, as a way to as a basis for this, mm -hmm. I, I I would have loved to have met the met the man out if he was still alive and said, "Hey, I got this pipe. It's one of yours." What the hell were you thinking? 
I love it, but seriously, <laughs> let me know. Right. Oh, it's very interesting. Yeah, and in it, I'm smoking some uh, Cherokee from the Country Squire, because that's what I had sitting on the desk. Nice choice. Honestly, I think it was my choice from last week's uh, Pipe Club, and uh, I just hadn't put it away yet. So, for you guys, you've heard uh, a couple of pre-recorded Greg and I episodes about a month ago, and the last two weeks, it's been me for about ten minutes, and uh, doing a little Minecraft uh, setting up and getting you guys used to the new format, and now we're back. So, for us, it's been like four weeks, almost, since we've actually <laughs> Pretty talked. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was originally going to try to make, uh, we were at least going to make it for one of the uh, the Wednesday before I left to chat and everything but that was uh, that was before I learned that like we would be leaving uh, in the morning <laughs> on Thursday and uh, yeah that was that was not fun um, so unfortunately I had to bail on that oh well it is what it is family trip time with the wife and the kids and you said you were going you seen your mom and your sister? Uh, no, um, we were, we were going, seeing. Oh, right, you were going to see the godparents. The godparents yes. uh, for Oliver. Yeah, uh, see the godparents and then uh, see her family. Your in-laws, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. I am. Uh, so yeah, that was a that was an interesting trip. Um, if you don't mind uh, the talking about it or if you're interested okay uh yeah no uh we went to uh the nashville area to, to visit uh her uh, our our son's godparents uh which uh involved a old college friend of ours and her husband and stayed there for about a week about a week a little bit longer so like from the like uh, through the fourth the holiday of the fourth, all the way to uh, the following uh, Sunday, and then after that we went to Kentucky, and that was where we uh, first met up with her brother and his family, and then uh, her family. Uh, but you know, despite that, like uh, a lot of the time I spent just kind of uh, with my, you know, taking my son places or trying to figure out something. Nashville was, is a pretty cool area. I've never been to Tennessee, but uh, it was a, a cool area to check out. And uh, I can see why people really like it there. Uh, and definitely a lot of uh, <laughs> country music stuff, but uh, other things to do as well. Actually, uh, one of the things I did was uh, uh, I went to a Civil War battlefield, which uh, my uh, great 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 grandfather fought at so that was uh, which I didn't even know uh, who would be I mean, my, he was involved in a lot of stuff on the uh, western theater which involved a lot of stuff in Tennessee and Kentucky and uh, while we were at uh, uh, the, our, our my child's godfather's uh, parents house uh, I just kind of did like a quick search of like all the stuff that was like around and discovered oh uh, Stones River uh, that's uh, that's where he, would, he fought uh, one of the battles he was at so uh, I got to well I, first time I tried to go for it it was <laughs> we got rained out uh, while I was driving <laughs> there and so I decided to come back because I did not want to do that uh, in the rain that was probably a good plan yeah second time uh, the next day it was uh better but uh, uh, apparently I, I didn't realize this but nine month olds aren't uh, the biggest fans of history and uh, they also don't like the heat which you know I, I completely get but uh, you mix the two together and uh, you get one cranky uh, you know, infant and, mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, 
I had to cut that real short, uh, a lot shorter than I would have liked, because uh, I only really got to do the visitor center and uh, just a little stuff around that area. Um, but I did manage to go to where I believe is uh, uh, the location that uh, this regiment defended. So that was uh, uh, that was important to me. So I'm glad I at least got to see that. Um, Besides that, you know, just doing kind of little local stuff a lot, uh, trying the local food. Um, I did get to meet up with my friend Marcus, who uh, <laughs> is thanks thanks to him. You know, I have the microphone and everything. And then, uh, yeah, uh, Kentucky was fun. Um, while I was there, I was bitten by. Uh, I believe a brown recluse spider. Uh, at least I think so. Uh, thankfully, we got that uh, treated with some antibiotics, so uh, nothing bad come of that. But uh, yeah, that was uh, easily the nastiest spider bite I've ever had. Wow! Now I know exactly one person has been bitten by that thing. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, we had to, so like. Uh, like growing up, I was always, you know, being terrified of spiders as a kid, and uh, you know, of course, you you learn about all the poisonous ones, right? Uh, as you do, and uh, you know, like where I live, it we don't really have them around there, but uh, I've always been aware of them. And anytime I move to a new area, I always uh, check their locations, and uh, so I was always, you know, I had this image in my mind of like, you know, you getting been like going to shock or something. Really, it's more annoying than anything. Uh, you know, it wasn't, uh, and probably thanks to the antibiotics, that probably helped us with a lot of what could have happened. Oh, very likely, very likely. Yeah. Um, but uh, the final thing uh, that, uh, now that I'm thinking about it that uh, I'll bring up is uh, I actually ended up going to a really cool uh, kind of like uh, geeky uh, bookstore that had uh, a lot of cool stuff. They had like a live, uh, a, a couple of live different statues like that are like full scale. So uh, there was like a Steve Rogers before becoming Captain America. Well, like, uh, you know, Captain America, but just not in the costume. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so after taking the Super Soldier Serum, um, there was a TARDIS and Dalek from Doctor Who. Uh, Darth Vader and R2-D2, uh, Power Ranger, and, uh, and just a lot, and a lot, tons and tons of vintage toys, uh, that, which was a, really cool to see. Everything from like He-Man, uh, Thundercats, uh, Star Wars, Star Trek, uh, Tribbles uh, from Star Trek even, uh, all sorts of stuff. It's uh, the Inner Geek, which is in Huntington, West Virginia. Yeah, I saw some of your pictures uh, of that from uh, when you put them on Instagram there, and I thought they were pretty cool. Yeah, no, it, it was a cool place. Like, I, I really dug it. Um, you know, I, I wish it had a little bit more on the book side, but, uh, you know, they had a lot of comics there. Uh, and, and the toys, like, it, it was, like, one of the best collection of toys that I've seen, like, at a place, so... Uh, it, I, uh, one of my friends uh, that I used to work with, but uh, you know, we still uh, see each other. He's a big uh, GI Joe fan, and uh, uh, used to collect the action figures. And I sent him a bunch of uh, pictures of the uh, GI Joe collection they had. He was pretty jealous. <laughs> Never got into collecting GI Joe myself, but uh, I had one or two, and. Uh... Mm -hmm. They were always a, a favorite toy. So. Oh yeah, they were super articulate, poseable. Yeah, I always loved you know, loved when I could when I could find uh, and convince my mom to get me the, the little packs that had the little, the little, you know, the little stands you could put on their feet so you could uh, so they wouldn't fall over and you could pose them mm -hmm. in running positions or fighting positions or whatever. I always loved those packs. I think. Toys like that, all they also came with a lot of like 
accessories and everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like uh, the Ninja Turtles, like the oh, yeah. first ones where it came with their weapons, but also like uh, Ninja Stars and all sorts of fun stuff. Definitely, um, it puts modern toys to shame in, in terms of like, oh, for what, sure, uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I mean, you have like the really uh, nice looking like Marvel and DC stuff, but uh, still, it, it's missing a lot of the fun accessories. Not to mention the uh, posability. I mean, I've got Kylo Ren over there, uh, over there, and I can move his arms up and down, and I can move his legs, but there's no jointing. Yeah. One of my favorite toys as a kid was uh, this Spider-Man toy where he was like super articulate, like especially for the time, where like all of like the joints on him, uh, like from like the wrist all the way down to like the bottom of his foot, you could pose. Yeah. And uh, it was just fun to kind of like get him to like uh, all these like acro acrobatic uh, poses. Uh, the bummer was that uh, it was all held together by a rubber band inside. And eventually, my, from use, mine just uh, eventually just broke. Of course. Right. And uh, there's no fixing it. Yeah, because that Spider-Man you're talking about, he was articulated the same way the G.I. Joes of the time were, with the rubber band in the center. As soon as those rubber bands break, though, your toy's done. Yeah. But uh, how about you? How is it? How have your uh, past couple of weeks have been? Well, fairly uneventful. Um, as I as I was saying uh, back a few weeks ago, I started on 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 Flashcraft. So I've been doing some stuff over on uh, on that server, getting ready for the Brainiac battle. That's what's going on there. Um, so basically, just been, you know building some stuff from the from the comics and whatnot. So building a little, little base, not from the comics, but you know fits in. My character's an alien, right? My my avatar, so... I built a spaceship. Actually, if you look really closely in the background, where the, where the little axolotl tank is behind us right now, if you look carefully back there, you can see... Because I, I built this uh, studio thing that the, the avatars for you and I are in, in my test world, and you can see the prototypes of the ships through the tank, so... That's cool. So yeah, I've been doing that. Um, figured out how to make it so that we are we got, we got some motion going on in the videos instead of just static, badly photoshopped pictures. Sorry about that, everybody. I'm not a Photoshop genius. Neither am I. Um, but it's really really been uh, fairly uneventful, um, except last weekend. We <laughs> you remember last year about this time we had a flood mm -hmm. guess what happened this weekend did it flood again a little bit <laughs> oh, no. nothing major nothing major I got a few pieces I just have a few pieces of trim to replace that's it but uh. Uh, one of the neighbors in this unit um, basically had the exact same thing happen all over again oh yeah, yeah, we're talking, uh, they're replacing their basement again for the second time in a year. Like, literally, it was, it was practically a year. It was practically a year to the day when it happened. It had, like, last year, it happened on July 12th. This year, it happened on, like, the 15th or something like that. <laughs> so, like, just a few days ago. So, that was fun. Yeah, I had to. I had ditched out of the pipe, uh, the, the this pipe life uh, pipe club meeting early because we had the the blowers, the industrial hit humidifier down here I, to dry everything out. I uh, I, pull, I pulled the plug on the blowers, uh, the air blowers, so I could you know not you know hear everything because those things are loud. No matter how good I got the soundproofing around this little area I use, the mic would have picked them up. Yeah. Because like. You can see this wall right behind me here where the, my pipe rack's on. They were right, right there. That's where the blowers were. Yeah. And, uh, 
the dehumidifier was just off a ways, but it wasn't too loud. You couldn't hear it in the background. I know I, I checked before I switched the mic over from the recording setup to the uh, meeting setup. Um, but I had to, I had to have to, I had to jout after about an hour because it was getting too hot down here. Yeah. Was, they don't blow cold air. They blow hot air. Which I guess makes sense to help kind of speed up the oh, yeah, process. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they came and picked them up today. Or yesterday. Yesterday they came and picked them up. But I already unplugged the blowers on, on Sunday night. And yeah. uh, had they not come for the dehumidifier, I was going to unplug it yesterday myself and just leave it there until they came. But that was the most exciting thing. Um, today, I uh, got uh, got uh, just you know, finally got to do some work outside because it's been raining so darn much. Uh, we got uh, got some good tomatoes and beans coming in in the garden this year, and uh, well, I don't know how good the beans are yet, but the, the vines are going nuts. I'm trying to train them to grow certain ways and trying to keep them down because last year they ended up you know in the gutters. So they were, yeah. I had to use a ladder to harvest them at certain points last year. I'm trying to keep, trying to avoid that this year. Um, right. But uh, we were able to. Uh, I was able to uh, get. Uh, I built a. I built a picnic table type thing uh, a few months ago, and I got an umbrella for it, and I was able to get that installed and whatnot in the day. So I got a nice little sitting area outside with the umbrella, and now all we need is a few little of those twinkly lights and. We'll have a nice little sitting area outside. And as long as, nice. as long as the wind and whatnot doesn't hold, holds up, that's where I'll be taking the pipe lift meetings as long as it's not raining and too windy. Yeah. It's interesting that uh, it's been super rainy by you, by you guys. Uh, I, granted, I haven't really been around in the area too much uh, until you know, basically last uh, Friday. But... Uh, it's been a pretty dry summer for the most part. Yeah, not for us. It's been windy and humid and rainy. I feel like I'm in Chicago. Or we Louisiana. Do have the humidity, but, uh, but not uh, not so much the rain. I mean, it rained a little bit before we left, but uh, yeah, for the most part, it's been a pretty uh, rainless summer. Yeah, what else is going on? Uh, nephew's turning. Let's see, my nephews are turning four and three, both this month. So I got two birthday parties to go to over the next two weeks, and they're exactly a week apart. So when, fun. so when you're hearing this discussion, I've already been to one and going to another. Be a little exhausting. Uh, are the same people going to be at each party? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, at least, uh, it, you know, you can have a party. Yeah, we're, we're we're there now, too. Um, mm -hmm. Ontario decided. Yeah, we can go into having having outdoor parties, and I think not to check the limit on indoor. I think we, I think we can actually get ten to fifteen people in the house now. Nice, which is great for us because we haven't had been able to. We haven't legally been able to have company for months, year almost. Yeah. But, it's been, uh, uh, yeah, no, the, it's, it's weird, like, uh, just going to play, like, I, I haven't had to wear a mask really uh, going into a place uh, for the past couple of months. So there was only a place uh, in uh, for, uh, the zoo that kicked me, uh, a gift shop at the zoo that kicked me out. So, uh, and they still served me. Uh, I just had to wait outside uh, after they, uh, so that I, I could uh, stay. Um, 
but uh, for the most part, it's been pretty open. I, I'm hoping it stays that way, but I'm afraid that uh, uh, there might be some people calling for more stuff with this uh, uh, quote unquote variant that's out there. Which one? Delta, uh, I, Lambda, yeah, Gamma? Delta. But, uh, I, you know, which, you know, eh, uh, I'm not too worried about it. Um, although I, I had to laugh. Uh, the, I don't know if you heard about what happened in the States here uh, this uh, past uh, week or two, but uh, there are some politicians that uh, uh, fled the state of Texas to uh, block uh, something being voted on uh, and they made a big show of it on uh, like social media and stuff and they were on a plane together uh, almost 50 of them and none of you know and none of them were wearing masks and this is like the party that uh, um, is very like pro masking pro vaccine that figures uh, yeah yeah and so none of them are wearing masks and uh, they're all like smiling and everything and, you know went to Washington and Met with a whole bunch of high profile people to, you know for their cause and everything and then it came out that uh, three of them contracted uh, COVID even though they were vaccinated and uh, now that now it's being considered uh, what they did uh, was considered a super spreader event and uh, it's just funny to see people that uh, you know force you to try to follow the rules and not follow the rules and then it bites them in the butt. Well, that's and, the fun uh, part right there. It bit their it bit them. Like, uh, here we are. We're not going to do what we've been telling you to do. And now we have COVID. Yeah. And one of, uh, one of the people that was ex uh, possibly exposed was the vice president. <laughs> and she's not, uh, you know, like if you're exposed, even if you don't uh, come down with it, you're supposed to quarantine and she said that she's not going to quarantine so uh, that's a uh, some good messaging there yes do what I do not what I say right any kids that are listening if there are any listening with your parents because you really shouldn't be listening to a smoking podcast of any kind unless you're of age I never put that in there but it just felt like it this time yeah. But to any yep. kids listening, don't do what your vice in America. Don't do what your vice president did. Don't do what she says either, because well, she's obviously a hypocrite. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, not a good person. Um, but uh, I purposely tried to leave uh, party parties out of it, just uh, so that uh, whatever party you want to imagine that it is, that's what it is. You guys only have two parties, and if it's the vice president, it's not hard to figure out. <laughs> oh, I, I, I know, but uh, and plus, <laughs> she's the only uh, female vice president we've ever had. So, but uh, yeah, you know, like you know, and it's just uh, it, life is just funny that way. Um, but uh, you know, always follow what you're, you know, talk to your doctors and follow what they, the advice that they have to say and the guidelines for that and uh, you know use your use your brain absolutely don't be a sheeple use your head that's right I right mean, don't live in fear but uh, don't be dumb either well yeah I, like a friend of mine and his brother is going supposedly going on a trip not been vaccinated nothing like that not planning on wearing any masks and whatnot no good reason for him not to get like he's got no good reason to get the not get the the, the the shot right I'm not getting the shot right now because you know technically in Canada they do the, these shots even the Pfizer and the moderna the ones the seem to be the best working ones and whatnot the only reason they're here is because we're in uh, emergency circumstances because we're in a yeah. the country's in a state of an emergency if uh, things were normal, None of the vaccines would be that I know of, anyway. And then, again, this could be wrong because I haven't really followed too closely on uh, on uh, the politics of it and whatnot. But uh, none of them would be allowed in the country because they haven't been properly human te humanly tested and whatnot. None of the procedures have been followed. 
and our governing health association hasn't actually approved them for for uh, human use. So I'm sorry. I oh, just, for sure. I just don't want to be a guinea pig. Yeah, no. Um, you know, if it wasn't uh, so that I could do stuff with my pipe band, uh, I probably would have been in the same. I, I would definitely have been in the same boat. Yeah, that's that's the, that's the that's vaccine. the thing. That's the thing too. I'm not scared to get it. That, that's the other thing. I'm, I just want to get out there too. It's one of those things. If like as you know, I'm looking for for looking looking for a job, and. Um, if the employer says, hey, great, we want you, you can start on this day, but you need to have your uh, vaccine, and then I'll get the shot. Yeah. But I'm not going to get it until I have that job right in the palm of my hand going, yep, you, you're in. Just to get your vaccines. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, like, for me, like, I, I did it, uh, you know, like, I, I'm not... I would have preferred not to have gotten it, but, uh, yeah, you know, like I, one of my, the reasons why I didn't want to do it was, yeah, like it, you know, it's not really been tested. Um, and you know, like if something were to happen to you, you can't, uh, I mean, there's no recompense with like, uh, being able to, to sue these companies yeah, uh, no. because, uh, they're, they're protected from, uh, anything like that. Yeah. The other, the other thing is, uh, my sister's a nurse. And the only reason she got the shot is because she had to for her job. Right. She's yeah. in healthcare. She had no choice. Had she had the choice, though, she wouldn't have got the shot. And she's a nurse, so that tells you something. At least tells me something, anyway. Yeah, that tells me something. I, I There's definitely been, like, a lot of, like, fear-mongering about it. Oh, absolutely. They're, they're really, really pushing everyone to, to get it. And, uh, the... the they're really not happy with the numbers to the point where like they've uh, let's see uh, I think one state was offering um, the people that got the shot to uh, get weed um, one per uh, one state I think that our state uh, Illinois uh, if you you got the shot you could uh, get be part of a special lottery uh, so when you see in- incentives like that it's uh, it makes you question things Oh, absolutely! Like those incentivized, those incentivized things, or things that are actually being talked about for being done here in Canada and at least Ontario as well, because they're not happy with the numbers, even though practically eighty percent of our population has had one shot and fifty percent has had two, and this is a total farce but the the chief doctor for ontario is saying that you know no we don't have herd immunity till we hit 90 percent of the population uh vaccinated i don't know where he gets his information from but herd immunity took effect five percent ago the number well, 70, yeah. this has always been 75 percent yeah well, they say that, you know, like uh, 64% of uh, all percentages are uh, made up on the spot. Of course. So, of course. Yeah. My argument for statistics has always been you can make the numbers say whatever you want them to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now uh, they're, uh, the, they're people at the White House and stuff. They're trying to work with like phone companies to actually censor people's text messages uh, and, and emails and whatnot. I, I think it, it's mainly text messages though, uh, for uh, what they said is a uh, COVID misinformation. And uh, if you try to send it, uh, it won't go through. Which uh, it's very scary. And, uh, I didn't know it was yeah. 1984. Oh, I know. Oh, so many things that I could say. Yeah, I think I just covered it. It's not 1984. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah. Some of the things are just really scary out there. And then you you can take it the other way. The, the, The fear mongering can go the other way, too. Sure. 
I mean, we've been talking about on the government side of it. But I happen to know people that have been showing videos that quote unquote prove that, you know, you get little micro bots running around in your bloodstream when you get the vaccination. Oh, right. Like the, the, the magnets and then the nanobots and stuff. And it's like, you know, this isn't helping for like a good, like actual conversation on the subject. Yeah, I I wasn't the one who got the got the video shown to, and it's probably a good thing that I wasn't, at least for the people who were showing the video, because then I'd have to go to uh, my pastor and say, "Hey, do you know what one of your elders is showing people, saying this is what's going on with these vaccines, disseminating misinformation? And this is the person you want in a that the church wants in a in a." In a leadership position? I don't think so. I didn't vote for the guy. I didn't want him there in the first place. Right. My family's known his family for... Let's see. His wife and my mom have been friends since they were in public school. Like In your case... When I say public school, I mean elementary school. Yeah. Because I know you, you, you divide it up a little bit differently than we do. Right. It's like if you hear a Canadian say public school, they're talking about just the elementary grades, and high school is nine through ten, nine through thirteen, or twelve, or whatever you happen to have. Yeah. Yeah, we have. Uh, at least with me, we had elementary and then middle school and then high school. Yeah, the middle school grades would be rolled into high. There's, I think they're split up. Like, what's middle school? Like seven through nine or something like that. Uh, some sometimes uh, seven, well, seven, eight. Um, uh, well, usually, like with mine, it was um, sixth grade through eighth grade, and then nine through twelve was high school. Okay, so nine through twelve, that's the same here. Um, but uh, yeah, middle school is still like just elementary. So there's there, there's no difference. Just two, just two levels. Education is still stupid, but. Yeah, we're we're just waiting here, like for the the foot to the foot to drop, and for the quote unquote fourth wave that we're apparently going to be getting in September. I say apparently because, well, that's what there's not, that's what uh, the government's telling its branches: get ready for the fourth wave in September. Right when the kids are going back to school. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I really wonder. Are they going to be closing the school down? No, this doesn't affect my kid at all because, well, either of either them that are school age because they're staying home for school at least until next school year. Uh, yeah, we're, we're dealing with that and we're dealing with a uh, uh, crisis right now with... Uh, something called critical race theory going on right now with our schools. Yes, critical race theory. I've heard of it. I'm not exactly sure about it. I'm assuming it's some sort of white detracting thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, It's... uh... Uh, yeah, like I, some of the stuff that I've seen, basically, yeah, basically it's uh, teaching kids that, uh, you know, you're born racist, uh, uh, you know, if you're white, and uh, that uh, you need to apologize. I, I, obviously, I'm, uh, there's, you know, I'm kind of just like <laughs> summing up probably like uh, right. the, the most extreme forms of uh what I've heard, but I mean, there's been video. Uh, the one nice thing about the lockdowns has been that parents have been able to see uh, what parent uh, teachers have been teaching their kids, and uh, it's kind of exposed this stuff. And uh, because of that, now parents have been, are starting to get more involved in uh, having to say about what is being taught to their kids 
and uh, it's been really opening up like a lot of battlegrounds uh, all over the states. Uh, teachers are getting really angry and quitting, uh, and it, it's not just that too. Like uh, I've heard, like there was a teacher, I think out in California, I think that was fired for uh, basically teaching like kindergartners or first graders like sex ed and like actually showing like uh, some pretty extreme stuff and uh, acting kind of like I don't understand like I've always been told that I've done like a good job and it's just like, uh, like that they don't need to know that at, at that age no like I mean my oldest is just starting to ask some pointed questions and he's eight this year so like I, I mean when the kid's ready they'll ask I mean I understand that uh, once you get to a certain point in uh, your health classes and whatnot you have to go over anatomy I mean nothing wrong with that I mean people should know what to call their parts I mean yeah it's that simple the parts have a name use them we do our kids call their parts what they're what they're called yeah well and i i think that's important too just uh um like i've talked about that with my wife and it's important to be able to do that so that uh, you know god forbid something were to like happen where they were someone was to like uh, touch them in an inappropriate place or something they can accurately tell you like what happened to Absolutely. Even more so, uh, like now that I have a daughter, that's even more on uh, the for, for, forefront because odds are still at a, still still pretty good that if anything like that's going to happen to one of my kids, it's probably going to happen to her. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's a scary thought. Um, it is absolutely uh, it is uh, definitely like a, a number of the people in my life uh, you know things happen to them and it was all at an early age too and uh, you know to find that out you know that it's really disturbing you know like I don't there are people out there that take this extreme view or like uh, you know like uh, you know men like they denigrate men and act like we're all animals and everything and uh, uh, not to be trusted and everything you know that I think that's somewhat ridiculous but at the same time like you, you see the, the news of what happens and like the true monsters that are out there and even people that you know uh, on a day to day day to day basis and are friends with and even like consider them like a like a brother or something you know one day you can just find out uh that uh they're doing things they shouldn't be doing uh with uh, others and it you know rocks you to your core yeah absolutely but uh, uh things no are... and that's why it, i guess to, to yeah like it that's the thing that terrifies me. Like, I'm already kind of, like, terrified for... Well, not terrified, but, you know, definitely concerned for my son. Um, you no, know, for, for these type of things. But yeah, it's going to be even worse if, like, you know, we have a daughter in the future. I definitely... <laughs> I definitely understand now, like, the, the thought... You know, the, the stories of, like, fathers with shotguns and, like... <laughs> Uh, you know, having the talk with, uh, you know, guys on, on the date uh, before they take their daughters out. <laughs> it's like, you know what? I, I think I'll be uh, right there with them. I don't have a shotgun. <laughs> I have a pellet, Neither do I. I have a pellet gun. But what I do have are a few samurai swords that I do know how to use. So those will be being, uh, you know, oiled when the dates start coming home. They'll probably be the most well-oiled that I've ever had them. 
Yeah, I know. Uh, I'll have something for them. That, that's for sure. But time is ticking on really fast here. I'm thinking it's about time to wrap things up. It's been just kind of a catch-up conversation week. We'll get back into the TV talk and all that stuff very soon. So, if you are wondering how you can keep up with us throughout the week, you can always uh, catch me on Twitter at DrAlien201. The show is at Syndicated Pipe. On Instagram, you can find Dr. Alien productions under dr alien 201 and i have a personal one that i just don't give out but i'm pretty sure if you dig around you'll find me also we have uh, our facebook page that's out there for you all the links of course will be in the description of the video and in the uh description of the uh, you know the, the stuff that you don't podcast. read on the podcast the links are down there greg where can the people find you uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter uh, when I occasionally post and basically retweet my frustration about uh, things going on in the world at uh, the underscore Badger Piper. Uh, you can find uh, happier things on my Instagram uh, at uh, the Badger Piper. And uh, I think I have that. Well, it's such a private if you friend me, and I can tell that you're, uh, you know, a fellow pipe smoker, just a, you know, geek friend or whatever. I'll be sure to add you. And of course, if you uh, want to talk to us a little bit more at length, you can always send us an email at reverseflashtime at gmail dot com. And of course, comments below in the comment section. We do read those. Absolutely. Because we don't, we don't get many of them, so of course we read them. So yes. give us comments, you know. Tell us we're fools. Tell us tell us you like our pipes, even though you can't see them anymore. Um, <laughs> just tell us something. Yes. Uh, yeah, and uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Yep. So with all that being said, we will wish you good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next week. Have a good night.